Is Coach has a golf game. Well, golf game is okay. I'm gonna put it okay. I want first of all, I just want to say congratulations to our softball team. Uh, been in the National Invitational Softball Championship, uh, outstanding. I got a chance to go out there and sneak a peek a little bit there and encourage them and pray for them and all that. So congratulations there to uh, the softball team. It was a great uh, win for them and first time ever. Uh, now they got a host. <laughs> That's even better. They're going to even host the championships here too. And congratulations to them. Our baseball team had a great win last night too. So the knockoff home, uh, a double down the line and did some things going on there. So that was an exciting game there too. So I want to uh, congratulate our softball team and our baseball team. I know our baseball team got some work to do too as they're going to start their tournament here in the uh, next week. Um, again, our football team, uh, exciting time that's been going on here. I would first want to go back and talk about our captains just briefly here a little bit. Uh, Mike Henderman there. Trey Turner, Solomon McGinty, and Jeremy Peters. Uh, those guys were selected as captains. The interesting thing is um, I did a little bit different this year. Well, the first time, we've always had our players vote. Uh, but this time, uh, I kind of did a little bit different. I had the guys who were two semesters or less leave the room. Uh, I had the upperclassmen decide on who they wanted to vote. I had them to set a criteria. Uh, I let them set the criteria. I came back in the room just kind of to make sure uh, what the criterias were, uh, made a couple of adjustments, and most of the biggest things were they did some good things about they wanted to have somebody who uh, understood the mission of our university, uh, for being a Christian. Uh, they had to honor their teammates and uh, honor the things about our society. Uh, they also had an opportunity to say that they were good football players, but they also were respected of everybody around them, and so they had a chance to vote. So they uh, voted those four guys. So it was uh, definitely interesting in the past. I had done it where we just kind of hand out ballots. I, I would put the people's names, seniors, and then the uh, underclassmen, then uh, my, my coaches and myself, we would kind of talk about who we thought were underclassmen would be able to uh, fit in the category as far as being captain. So uh, it was kind of a spur of the moment. I didn't tell anybody about it. Uh, I just kind of told them in our last meeting and uh, kind of told them about that and put it right in there. And they did a good job within about I would say probably 25 minutes it took them, and so I was proud of them the way they did it. And uh, so it was a unique way to do things of that nature and kind of been talking to us some coaches around the country. Some people were doing it that way, and I thought that would fit us. Uh, so I'm excited about this. And, uh, they, again, they, they chose it uh, right in front of their, their own eyes of who they selected to be their captain. So we're excited about those, uh, those opportunities that they have. Go ahead. Thoughts on President Trump announcing some of the future opponents as you make this FBS transition? Well, uh, I guess I can say it's thrilling. Unfortunately, I was not able to be here, but uh, just thrilling to have the uh, United States of America president here and Donald Trump and just uh, being here at Liberty University. I uh, heard that he kind of snuck a little peek in my office and so on and so forth, but uh, an honor to have the president uh, here at Liberty University, a tremendous honor. And then making him have an opportunity to uh, announce our schedule uh, was phenomenal. Uh, the exposure uh, that we talk about is going to the next level FBS. Uh, it just brings so much more national exposure. Uh, probably just in that one day or that one speech or been here an hour or whatever, I mean, there's millions and millions of people maybe had never even heard of Liberty University, and now they've heard of Liberty University. And so now uh, that's even a bigger audience that, that we have people to go to, again, not just from an athletic standpoint, but just from a student standpoint to come in here and get a great education here at Liberty University. So uh, it was an honor and a privilege to have him here, and uh, it was great to have him announce our, our schedule. When we have a final scholarship max, you think, for 17, in that number in mind? Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, ongoing. Uh, I mean, I think we're going to go anywhere from 70, could go up to highest maybe 76, 78. Probably definitely won't go more than 79. Uh, that's ongoing, and a lot of things that we're trying to take place as far as uh, continuing to recruit. Um, there may be people we add on our football team that are currently on the roster that we may add to have scholarships. I think in the next two years, I think it is that we have to average, I believe it's 76. Don't quote me for sure on that, but there's a certain number that we have to average in the next two years to continue to make the uh, FBS move. As for, we have to be conscious of that. So we've been talking about it, uh, Ian and I, and uh, a lot of things are going into play and a lot of things we have to, to conquer and talking about that with compliance. Uh, so there's a, a lot of other things that we have to be aware of that we have to accommodate to fit the, uh, the FBS model. Does having the 2018 schedule in hand help on the recruiting trail? Are you able to, you know, 
look at those recruits for the next coming years and say, you know, this is who we're specifically playing, and obviously Auburn, Virginia, and some of those others? Well, no question. I mean, now, now it's, it's out there. Uh, it's facts. It's not just us speculating. It's not just us dreaming about it or we think we're going to play these people. We, we have the uh, schedule here, and we show it to them, and they can see it. And it's definitely it's exciting um, to know people that now it's final. It's here. Uh, they're going to have an opportunity to, to showcase their skills against great uh, competition. And, and again, it's going to be a challenge for us. But again, it's exciting about the opportunity and exciting about Liberty University and uh, uh, for us to be playing great schools and then having schools come in here. Uh, again, I think that was a phenomenal thing there. Having our first FBS game is going to be against Old Dominion right here at home. And so I know our fans will be tremendously excited right here in state as far as Old Dominion of Virginia. I hope that we could play them every year. I know we don't have that set at this point in time, but that's something that I would be for as far as having a uh, uh, really a game with them, if you want to call it a rival game or whatever you want to call it, to say let's play them in the next 10 years, uh, Old Dominion on a regular basis. Also having North Texas, that's a team that you know, you've got personal uh, connections to. What does that mean to you to be able to go there and then also come here? Well, I, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is just uh, the recruiting. Uh, the state of Texas, which we do recruit the state of Texas, we do have uh, some players there. and. And I actually got my degree at the University of North Texas as far as where I finished there and all that. And so there's going to be some good meeting things there and all that. And just another opponent to get them here to come here is outstanding. I think Ian McCall and Mickey Garidi have done a tremendous job of putting this schedule together. I know a lot of people may think that that's pretty easy to do, but it's very, very challenging. And <laughs> I can just applaud them to say great job because uh, they put together some things here that uh, I didn't think would happen, in particular here in a short period of time. Uh, that, that's amazing. So. Uh, we just uh, give a God, uh, God to glory. When you look at the roster that was just released today, you mentioned running back situation early with Todd going down. That was an area of concern. But with Stefan electing to transfer, Joseph Dixon, Didier Monsiano also electing to leave, what does that leave in the running back pool for you? Well, we got uh, uh, Contori Matthews is going to be coming in here. A young man there was at Bland Junior College uh, is now out of uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Tallwood High School. Uh, he's going to be in the mix. Uh, Mitchell Lewis, uh, we're going to move him back to the uh, running back spot. Uh, so we're, we're going to be solid there. Uh, again, we got uh, good depth in Hickson and then also with uh, Mosley. And we'll have one or two other guys that we'll put in there and find out what's going to be the best situation. So we just felt like we need to get at least one more. And uh, again, I think we're going to be in good shape, though. Uh, again, Kentori Matthews is a guy that's probably I'm going to say he probably will be the fastest guy probably on our football team in the 40 uh, yards as far as that goes. So he will bring some speed. Uh, he's not a big guy per se, maybe 175 pounds or so, but he's quick uh, and he can run. With Stefan, with his leadership in the locker room and what he exhibited last year, how much of a loss is that, especially with you know this transition, probably needing him to help with these young guys at this upcoming year? Well, I think we got some good leadership here. I just start with our captains, and we got some other guys too that I think they really can fit into things. Obviously, Stefan, uh, you know, did a great job for us here at Liberty University, and he got his degree and graduated. That's all you can ask our guys to do is graduate, and he has a right if he wanted to, to go to another school, he uh, choose to do that. But uh, again, we'll have a, another quality people to to make sure that we can get our young guys and even guys that maybe have only played one year or so understand what that needs to take place and forth that goes. And obviously, I think Stephen Calvert's going to be, Buckshot's going to be one of those guys that step up and play a lot of ball. He's still a young guy when you stop and really think about it, but uh, he's played some uh, good football. Tyron Holloway is another big uh, loss there in the secondary. Uh, what, do, what do you see out of some of the returners there being able to step in and fill his shoes? Well, again, thank uh, Holloway for all of his services and things that he did. Again, he got his degree and he chose to decide to want to to go somewhere else, and uh, that's his choice. Uh, again, Tyron Holloway is a good man. Uh, I appreciate all he's done. I think our players that we have as far as coming back, I think Chris Turner still is a guy that's going to have a great opportunity to do some things. We've got Jeremy Peters. Uh, Jimmy Fox has played some experienced football. Malik Matthews. Malik Matthews is the guy that we're really counting on. Last year he got hurt. You didn't see a lot of him, but he's a talented young man. And he's going to have to come step up and do some things, and, and we're going to continue to recruit. Uh, we'll find some other guys there, too, that can compete for the positions. Frankie Hickson has been a solid back for you his first two years. Is this a chance, you think, for him to have a breakout season for you this year? Well, it's going to be great competition. And Carrington Mosley is a big, uh, big man that can get some things done. And uh, again, we're going to play a lot of them. They're both going to play quite a bit, and you know who start, who doesn't start, and all that. I know there might be a little bit of that, but uh, again, we got two quality guys that we know that can be very, very productive for us. And we'll find somebody else that uh, the third guy, the fourth guy, or whatever that's going to help us. So Hickson's going to have to earn it. Uh, he's a good football player. He's going to also be very instrumental in our special teams in a lot of different ways. The defensive line took a hit with Will Brown, Javon Frazier, and DeCarlo Hamilton all electing to leave. How are you looking to replenish 
you know, the front side, especially the interior, to really make sure you have some depth for next season? Well, I think that's part of what we're doing right now here in the junior college ranks here. We're out recruiting and getting some people here. We have one young man there, Charles Franklin, is coming in our way as far as a defensive uh, a tackle. As you're talking about the interior side of it, we're still recruiting, hopefully get one or two more guys. And so we'll see how that goes. Again, our coaching staff will do a great job, and we'll go out and recruit. We'll find some people who fit Liberty University and be able to come in here and produce and, and play. So we'll have people ready to go here when we're uh, ready to line it up on September 2nd. What are your expectations for uh, Buckshot this year? What do you expect from him uh, his sophomore season? Well, I expect for him probably the, the thing that we've been talking about and really trying to get him to improve on and hopefully do it in the summer and, and do all the time in his individual work that he does on his own is for him to be able to throw the ball a little bit better outside the pocket, throwing the ball on the move, throwing the ball in awkward positions and being accurate with that. So he's very accurate in the pocket is when he got to throw it on time, when he got to throw the ball deep, short, or whatever it is. We just now want to get it more accurate when he's on the move. And so I think that's what he's going to work on, and we're excited about that opportunity that he has. Mason had a good spring. Does that uh, put a little extra, uh, I don't know, fire in, in Buckshot to make sure that he's on top? Well, of competition. We, we want competition. And uh, there's no question about that, that we want the competition at every position. And uh, Mason Cunningham, uh, we've told him that, you know, Buckshot's going to start the first game unless there's just some other reason, some injury or something comes up. Uh, but he's going to be our starter, and uh, he's going to come, come in and compete. Uh, right now, he would be our uh, backup guy. Uh, again, there still can be some competition that will come in here and see what happens with Rudd and, and, and David Jeremiah and, and see what happens with who else we may bring in as a walk on. Yeah, the, go ahead to use the inside facility up. I have not. We have not. I uh, actually won't be cleared until uh, they've told me the first week or second week in July officially as far as being able to use the facility. So up until that particular time, uh, we are, are not able to use it. So we're hopefully definitely wanted to be open that second week in uh, July as we have camps and different people coming in at that particular time. We are uh, able to showcase it a little bit more. Now, we can go in and, and show it and do those things, but as far as our players being able to go in there and work out, they're unable to do that. Are you going to keep an eye on uh, what's happening with Chris Turner from a legal perspective and kind of monitor that and let the legal process you know, run its course? Oh, yeah, we, we, we just uh, kind of let that take care of itself. Again, he's a student here and he's a member of our football team, and, and we'll just see what happens. How about approaching the season, Coach, and you, you use the word compete with the season as it is, FCS independent and not playing in the Big South anymore. How do you approach this season? And too early to tell here in May to make that statement. But, you know, do you reach out to some teams like what Coastal did last year to kind of find out how you keep these guys going through the season here in 17? Uh, I've already talked to a few uh, uh, coaches as far as they've been through this process and this journey and, and all of that. And I think for what we want to do is we just want to go out and complete, uh, compete every single uh, down, every single play. We don't want to get into, well, because we can't win a championship, this, that, and the other. Again, we're competitors. I'm a competitor. And when you go out there and you coach and you teach and you develop, you're out here trying to play the best that you can and trying to win every single football game that you can. So uh, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. I think people have said that's really not been an issue. It may be more somebody whether we're going to play them or not play them. I think right now leaning toward probably playing most of our guys, again, unless something happens uh, later on. Uh, when I want to say later on, I'm talking about late summer. Um, as far as that goes, making some decisions whether we may register some people or not. But right now we're, we're uh, really talking about just going to end up playing majority of the people. Only reason I would not play somebody if they really adamant coming to me and stating that they uh, they want a red shirt, but most people they want to play, they want to get after it, they want to do some things of that nature, and so uh, and we'll see what happens.